A federal court in Colorado blocks the HHS mandate. Hi, I'm Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council. Joining me is Matt Barber, vice president of Liberty Council Action. Matt, this is good news. It didn't get a lot of media attention because it came on the day of the opening, I, I believe, of the Olympics and other things that were taking place. So it went under the radar of a lot of media. But this is a victory. Judge John Kane for the District of Colorado uh, ultimately said that the injunction against the HHS mandate will be in effect for at least three months while the court case continues to go forward. But this was a lawsuit on behalf of a business that is Catholic owned and operated, and they did not want to uh, be forced to provide contraception abortifacients or abortion-inducing drugs and sterilization under the Obamacare HHS mandate, that it would violate their religious free exercise. And the federal district court ultimately agreed and entered an injunction as it relates to that particular business. So this is good news uh, with regards to the HHS mandate. Yeah, great news. And the first real blow, I think, to the clearly unconstitutional HHS mandate that would require uh, businesses, Christian-owned businesses, Catholic-owned businesses, to violate their conscience and provide services, sterilization, abortifacient, and other services that many, certainly Catholic and, and Christian uh, families and, and private business owners find uh, not only objectionable, but but mortal sins. And and so uh, Obama has just been on the war path on, a, on really an unconstitutional rampage against the Catholic Church and against Christians in general. And here we finally have a federal court stepping into the defense of, of Hercule, Hercules Industries. This is a, D- a Denver-based family-owned company uh, that says we cannot comply with this law, and they've gotten a little bit of legal uh, relief here. Yeah, they did. And in fact, this is good news. Uh, Liberty Council ultimately filed a case on uh, March 23, 2010, on behalf of Liberty University. We argued in the district court that in addition to the fact that Congress doesn't have the authority under the Commerce Clause and the Taxing and Spending Clause, et cetera, that this violates the First Amendment free exercise because of the forced funding of abortion. Now, the district court in our case ultimately ruled that there was no evidence of funding abortion, which there is evidence of funding abortion. They went to the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals. The court there did not rule on the substantive issues, ruled on the Anti-Injunction Act, and ultimately found that This uh, could not move forward because of the Anti-Injunction Act. That went up to the U.S. Supreme Court, and it was held there pending the outcome of that decision out of Florida. And in that decision, the court found that the Anti-Injunction Act does not apply. So our case is still there in the U.S. Supreme Court right now. Uh, We have asked that court to both grant the petition, vacate the decision of the Fourth Circuit, and remand it or send it back down to the Fourth Circuit. So it goes back to the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals where we can then litigate the issue of the First Amendment Free Exercise Clause. We'll find out a little bit later this summer and in the fall about how we stand on that. But that's a provision that will ultimately affect Liberty University. Liberty University uh, is uh, a self-insured Christian university, has over 6,000 employees, and will be forced under this HHS mandate to literally fund abortion, contraception, and give sterilization as part of its coverage. And abortion specifically, uh, that is a non-negotiable issue that is contrary to the religious beliefs and tenets of Liberty University, just like it is in this Hercules run and operated by Roman Catholics, this is a direct violation of their freedom of conscience and freedom of religion. But people need to understand as well, you know, when the whole Obamacare debate was going on, we were screaming from the roof, rooftops, abortion is included, taxpayer funded abortion is included. You will be forced to be complicit with your hard earned dollars in t- uh, taking part in abortion homicide. We were ridiculed. We were t- t- called liars. Well, s- people need to understand that every Every single American citizen, every individual, every taxpayer is forced to violate their conscience if they happen to be pro-life by giving a, a, at least a, a $1 uh, uh, per payment, I think it is, toward an abortion kitty, a pool that pays for abortions. It does, in fact, as we have said all along, fund a, a taxpayer funding of abortion, and every single individual will be complicit in abortion homicide under Obamacare. Yeah, it's not just the HHS but, mandate yeah. that is is forcing businesses 
to ultimately fund abortion, but it's also this dollar per person payment that will also force every person to put this into a pool, like you're saying, a kitty, uh, to just fund abortion. So every person will be forced in this direction. And you're right. When we were going through the 2009 uh, debates mm-hmm. over Obamacare, we said that this would fund abortion. And uh, the leftists would say, no, it's not going to fund abortion, but we're not going to allow the Hyde Amendment to be here. But it's not going to fund abortion. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Hyde Amendment would have said it can't fund abortion. They didn't want the Hyde Amendment to apply, and they didn't allow it to apply. But they then said, but it's not going to fund abortion, which we knew it was. Yeah, and, and now then, it does. Yeah. And then we saw that President Obama fooled a couple of the Senate Democrats by giving this executive order that was worthless. Mm-hmm. And a couple of the second Senate Democrats actually came to the position of saying, well, if it doesn't fund abortion, then I'll vote for it. It was a way to get these votes. It then passed narrowly. As you're uh, saying, that you know, people said that we were wrong. Actually, history has shown that we were absolutely right. This is the biggest funding of abortion in history. Political smoke and mirrors at its worst, up to and including ramming it through on Christmas Eve, you may recall, yeah. 2009. Uh, dishonest. No wonder people are cynical about the political process when you see this kind of slime ballery going on here. I mean, it is just as low as it gets. They just flat lie. And you hate to be proven right, Matt, uh, uh, but, but in a situation like this, but we have have been proven right over and over again. I think people are starting to listen. And the next step is we have got to get this monstrosity repealed. And it underscores the reality that elections matter. It matters who you elect uh, to Congress, to the Senate, and, to, and, and certainly it matters who you elect to the White House. Well, there's a lot of ways to take Obama apart, Obamacare apart. And that is uh, uh, here you got the HHS mandate, at least as it relates to that one company enjoined. Now, that can be replicated across the country and other places as well. So you've got these employers that uh, we can continue to move forward with these lawsuits and just take pot shots at Obamacare by not allowing it to be forced onto these religiously affiliated employers. You also have the states Mm -hmm. that can refuse to expand Medicaid. The law did not envision that as a possibility. The Supreme Court rewrote the law to allow that as a possibility. And that is essentially like taking the mandate out, because that's another funding mechanism like the mandate was on individuals. The expansion of Medicaid was to the states. If states can now pull out and pull back, that also undermines Obamacare. If states then won't prepare these uh, exchanges, that undermines Obamacare. And then, of course, uh, we need to defund and also eventually repeal Obamacare in its entirety. Well, yeah, the one, I think, good thing, I guess, that came out of this uh, disastrous Supreme Court appearance with Justice Ro- uh, uh, decision with Justice Roberts is that essentially it's made the federal government toothless in terms of being able to have any kind of punitive action against the states that refuse to comply with it, with the, the Medicaid and, and so forth. And I also believe that if they don't set up the insurance exchanges as Obama care demands and so forth. Now the uh, the federal government is very limited in, in taking any kind of punitive action. So I know Texas and a number of other states are just lining up and just saying, no, we're just going to ignore this monstrosity. We're not going to take part in it. Yeah, Florida as well and others yeah. as well. And then, of course, uh, the federal government, the House will have to actually pass a bill to fund Obamacare. And right now we already have the votes in the House to say, we're not going to do it. We yeah. have enough votes in the House to repeal Obamacare, let alone defund Obamacare. And then, of course, in the Senate, if you have changes of heart there in the Senate, uh, you do potentially have the opportunity to repeal it. So this battle with Obamacare is by far not over. Uh, It has just begun. It is such an issue that we must continue to fight it, and fight it we will. Go to Liberty Council's website for more information. Join us and become part of the solution to ultimately restore the values that make America great. As we advance life, liberty, and the family through litigation, education, and through public policy. Our website is lc.org. Sign up for the Liberty Alert email and also the Grassroots Action email right there on the website. You can also sign the Chick-fil-A petition right there on the website as well to support the values of Chick-fil-A that marriage is the union of one man and one woman. Be sure to pray for Liberty Council, and also remember Liberty Council not only in your prayers, but your financial support as well. And we have the Patriot Handbooks series, one on political action of pastors and churches, one on the Constitution, and also one on the rights of students in public schools. You can ask for the series of the Patriot Handbook at Liberty Council's website, lc.org, or call us toll-free today.